So my camera overheated. Hi, my name is Davin Yi, and I'm a senior at the Rochester Institute of Technology, and I'm studying photosciences. Now, as you just saw, my time-lapse photos were bad, horrible, terrible. But why is that? The answer to that question is heat. Just like our bodies, if the internals of a camera get too hot, it struggles to work at 100%, and that rise in temperature creates thermal noise. Now, thermal noise decreases image quality when the internal temperature rises in a camera, which then strains the sensor. It also causes it to pick up signals that aren't from the scene being captured, thus creating hot pixels like this guy over here. Now, some of the factors that can cause thermal noise are things like frame rate, resolution, and bit rate. A video is essentially a bunch of photos being played very quickly over time. And so frame rate is the frequency at which a number of photos are being displayed in a second, thus frames per second or FPS. Most cameras can film at 24, 29, 30, 60, and even 120 frames per second. These different frame rates can show motion differently and some allow for slow motion. Now this clip is being filmed and played at 30 frames per second, and you can see that my arm is blurry as I wave it. Change it to 120 frames per second, you can see it's not as blurry. That's because the rate at which the photos are being captured is four times as much as the first clip, meaning that there's more images to show my arm's movement. As for slow motion, if I take that 120 FPS clip and put it into my 30 FPS video, I can make that clip play at 30 frames per second to slow down my arm and still have smooth video. The drawback to a higher frame rate is that it increases the file size of the video, which can make it harder to transfer and edit. The next factor is resolution. Resolution is the quantity of pixels that are contained in each dimension of a frame. Now this video is being filmed at 1920 by 1080, meaning that there are 1920 pixels from side to side, and then 1080 pixels from top to bottom. Now other than 1080, there are other resolutions that exist. There's 852 by 480, 1280 by 720, 3840 by 2160, which is 4K, and 7680 by 4320, which is 8K. Now just like frame rate, the higher the resolution, the larger the file size is. Lastly, there's bitrate, quantified as megabits per second or Mbps, which is the amount of data being transferred in a second. A higher bitrate means more data transferred over time. These three factors all play a part in the cause of thermal noise in a camera. When you have a high frame rate video shot at a high resolution, the camera has to put in more work to transfer all that data. That work then creates heat, and that heat then affects the camera. Now that we've talked about thermal noise, let me explain the project. I'm going to be testing a camera's internal heat management to see how it affects image quality over time. The cameras I'm using are the Nikon Z7 and the Sony a7 III, and I thought it'd be a really cool idea to see how each camera manages their internal heat. Okay, so we have both cameras here, and if you look real close, you can see over here that I don't have the budget to open them up in the chance that I break them and have to replace them. I'm broke. Anyways, I'm going to have the cameras photograph this X-Rite color checker passport for a set amount of time at a set interval. Now I say photograph because it's hard to analyze image quality in video since the manufacturers apply compression and each of them have their own methods of doing so. So while these guys are taking their photos, I'm going to be checking in every 10 minutes with this. This is a thermal camera that can read out the temperature of the scene or focus on a single object. So enough talking, let's get set up. All right, now that everything's set up, it's time to shoot. What, do you think I was gonna stay in there that whole time? That's literally hours of shooting. No thank you. With shooting done, it's time to analyze the results. Now in total, I ran two tests. Two of those were benchmarks by testing the image quality after changing ISO, and the other tests I had done were two second intervals for one hour at 100 ISO, three second intervals for two hours at 100 ISO, five second intervals for three hours at 800 ISO, and lastly, 10 second intervals for three hours at 100 ISO. I threw in that one 800 ISO test to see if changing the ISO to a higher value would make the camera get hotter faster. I then took those photos from the 10 tests and ran them through Photoshop's histogram panel to get the mean pixel value and standard deviation of the white, middle gray, and black patch from the color checker. Now this lets us know the average value of the pixels on the patch and how far off those values strayed from the average value of the patch. Now looking at the results, the condensed version is that I severely underestimated these cameras. After going through all the numbers and putting them in graphs, you can see that there were little to no changes in any of the values, whether it be the average or standard deviation. 
However, there was an increase in temperature for both cameras as they shot for longer and longer periods. So at the end of it all, these cameras are really impressive. Looking back, my photos were probably not ruined because of thermal noise, but probably for some other reason. And as long as you keep in mind the work that the camera has to do, there shouldn't be any issues with thermal noise. Thanks for watching.